This is just a quick explanation of um, why I've done user input using a loop. Um, because I've seen in some questions that students have asked attempts to try and do it in a different way and in a way that seems to make perfect sense but doesn't work as well. So I just want to explain the difference of what I've done here and what I've seen a few people try. So just like Scratch has an event to start the program, it can also check um, for events when you press the keys. So I've created this loop checking for the state of the key. All right. So this is not really checking for an event. An event is something that happens. This is checking for a state. It's saying, like, what is the position of that key right now? Is it pressed? And if it's pressed, it runs this code. If it's not, it just moves on to the next check, the next decision. Is the down arrow in, a, in its pressed state? Is, you know, is it pushed down? That's a little bit different from this one. This is actually checking for an event. An event basically happens once. So when you, just like when you're typing, when you press a letter, it, it, it presses once. It comes on the screen once. So we could take this, and I'm just going to show you. I could take my create four events to, to watch for or to, to listen for. Um, and then when the up arrow is pressed, I could just take the same code here and put that here. And with the down arrow, just copy that code to down arrow. The code kind of looks the same as this code, but it's happening in a different way. I've taken this, I've detached that from the flag being clicked, so this code won't run. And you can see that this loop is highlighted in yellow, it's running. This one isn't. If I clicked on it, it would run. But the program now responds to events. And so when the up arrow is pressed, it's going to change y by 5. So if I click it, this works. And if I hold the arrow keys down, it does move. And it does behave kind of similar to the other code, but it's not exactly the same. You can see it's much slower. And it it's a little bit sort of jerky looking. Like it, it's like it doesn't seem as smooth. And the reason that's happening is it's just waiting for the key to get pressed. And for a key to get pressed, generally it needs to go up and then it needs to go down and then go back up and then go down and then back up. Now, computer keyboards have a feature built into them that if you continually hold a key down, it will start repeating. It might be a little bit different on your computer and it might differ with different keystrokes, but if I hold down um, if I hit a letter, it, it goes once, but if I hold it down, it starts repeating. And you can see the rate at which it's repeating there. And I can use my arrow key to go once, or I can go a whole bunch of times. So you can see when I hold it down, that speed. That's actually what's happening in in my scratch program here as well. That's the same, that's just the speed at which my my keyboard is treating a continually pressed key uh, as if it were an up and a down press of that key. Whereas what's happening in this loop is different. Okay, well, take these out. You can see it's much more responsive. Uh, it seems to work a lot better. This loop is going around 
hundreds or thousands of times per second depending on the speed of your computer. Um, maybe it's a bit slower than that, but it's just always going in. It's not checking to see if you've uh, pushed down as an event. It's actually checking to s the state of the key. Is it down right now? And so if a key is down, it doesn't need to go up and down and up and down for this code to get triggered. It will just trigger if, if this is true. And so when I'm holding it, it's true. And this loop goes around a lot faster than the um, keyboard keystroke refreshes itself. And that's why we're getting smoother code here, or smoother uh, movement here. So that's why if you're going to build a program that has user input and you want to have something move smoothly around, this is a better way to do it. There is perfectly good cases for using this. Generally, if you want it to happen just once, so maybe I want something special to happen if I hit the space bar. Um, maybe I want to make my sprite disappear. So I could do something like, um, I'll just hide my sprite when the space key is pressed. What that's going to do is, uh, and then I want my sprite to reappear. So maybe I should make something else do that. So maybe um, well, I'll just make it the A. So now my program will run as usual. And I can move it around. If I hit the space key, I'm expecting my sprite to disappear, which it's done. It's still drawing. Okay, It's still there, you just can't see it. And if I hit the A, it comes back. Hit space, hit A, there we go. So these are really good for like one-time events, whereas this is good for constant. And hopefully that explains why uh, I've explained this method rather than um, this for moving things on the screen.